Hello everyone, Big Wise here. Hello from Sydney. Uh, I wanted to make a video to show people who are interested in the differences between an on-chain a PFP NFT project and most of the other PFP NFT projects which are off-chain um, for, for the actual image itself. Now, a couple of days ago, I came across a project called On-Chain Birds, which is what you're looking at right now. Uh, it is a project that took the CCO assets of Moonbirds and put them entirely on chain and then allowed people to mint, uh, which then generated brand new Moonbirds. And the cool bit is they uh, respected the original traits and rarity probabilities. So um, with normal uh, outcome of probability, it was likely that the 10,000 on-chain birds collection would be fairly similar to the moon birds collection in terms of the rare combinations. Now I've got here, as I said, the on-chain birds NFT as an example, and I've also got a moon birds one, and I tried to find one that was um, as close as possible. So the first thing you'll notice is that when you go down to the contract details, you can click to load up the ether scan for for each of these uh, nfts so i've got here the moonbirds contract on the right uh, and the second tab has the on-chain birds contract now if we go to the read uh, section for each there will be a function which will allow you to input the token id and it will return to you uh, information about that token in particular where the image is stored so it's this one here and this one here token URI so the token here is 9582 for the moon bird and for the on-chain bird it's 3767 and this is where you're going to see a big difference so I'll, I'll do the moon birds first if I query that token it tells me to go to what well, doesn't tell me to go there but tells me that uh, this is the location of the image so if I go right click go to that particular URL and it gives me the metadata so the name is that particular number gives you all the traits um, I think I did say gives you the image but uh, it's the metadata and inside the metadata there is one attribute or property called image and it gives us the location of the image so if we go there there it is so that's 9582 as you can see here now for on-chain birds it's going to be very interesting if i click this query button this is what you get you get a really long base64 encoded string it's a adjacent string as you can see here so straight away the difference is the moon birds gives you an external URL so this does not live on the blockchain this this has nothing to do with blockchain this particular uh, string is stored on chain but the actual contents belong at this particular server and you might see other uh, popular ones like uh, my pinata or um, a couple of other ones like th they're generally hosting services but with this on-chain birds one it's giving you all of this data is embedded on chain so what we can do here is copy this string and the browser is able to interpret or decode all of this and, and tell us what it is so if we go and open a new tab with that pasted inside you can see as I mentioned earlier it was a it was a JSON data type so it's returned a JSON object with a name 3767 which matches the particular uh, on-chain bird and it's also given us the image uh, property here and the image property itself once again is a base64 encoded string but this time the type is image uh, of an SVG coded in XML so if I grab this down to the end here so you can see the extra uh, bits here the attributes 
Now I can open this in a browser window and bang. So that's the image. In other words, the image is not hosted somewhere and pointed through um, the, the, meta, the data on chain. The actual image is on chain. This is it. So if we go and uh, do a, a view source on this, because this is not a JPEG, right? Like most people think NFT is a JPEG, therefore right click save and you have you know, your, as many board apes as you want. So you can do that with um, this one because this is an image, but this is actually not uh, this thing here. So if we do a view source, you will see, and if I do a line wrap, it's code. So it's code that follows the SVG standard as defined by the W3 consortium. That's not Web3, it's the World Wide Web Consortium. So if we go and open this link up, and click here, you can see an SVG is a scalable vector graphic and it is a markup language for describing two-dimensional graphics, applications and images and it is supported by all modern browsers for desktops and mobiles, right? So what this means is that as long as you follow the rules in defining uh, an XML structure for SVG, the browser is able to convert that and render it into an image. So another good way to, to show you how that's done is to do a Google inspect on this particular um, page. And you can see here that as I hover over the various lines of XML, on the left hand side, the corresponding uh, rectangles, because this is a rectangle, RECT, are highlighted. And if you know your CSS, you can, um, you'll identify the class. So this particular rectangle has a class name C129. And if I click on it on the right hand side, C129, as you can see here, has a fill property of an RGB of these codes, which corresponds to this pink background. So if I go and change this, the background changes. So I'll just put that back. And uh, the next line, so the first line starts at 00, zero XY00, zero zero, top left hand corner, has a width of 42. The next line has the same class, but it starts at X0, Y1, which is the next line down, and only has a width of 20 because we need a different color for the top of the hat, which is on the next uh, line, which is still the same line, if that makes sense. So uh, you can see here that the class C564, and look on the right hand side, the fill RGB is a different code that corresponds to this dark navy blue. Uh, and this starts at X20Y1 and has a width of two. As you can see, there are two, two boxes there. And then the rest of that line needs to go back to the pink. So we have again, uh, class C129 starts at X22, uh, remains on Y1, uh, row 1, and has a width of 20. And as you go further down, you can see each of the boxes are highlighted every time there's a different color. So this code that you see here, which is easy to read, is actually, when it's encoded, it's, uh, it's this. And when that's and when the, when the whole thing here, including the name, right, the entire JSON object is encoded into Base64, it is this. So, what the um, the important thing to take uh, take away from this is that when you mint a project that generates the randomness on mint in real time, and and saves the corresponding code in SVG format encoded as SVG into the blockchain. It means that no one can cheat, right? Because the contract itself is open. So you can always view the code and make sure that there really isn't anything sneaky going on, right? For example, if, if it's the 1000th mint, you know, make it a special one, right? you can see if people are, are trying to cheat you like that. That's why it's open. Um, but with the traditional way of doing PFP projects, 
all of these images need to be pre-generated. They are pre-generated by a human who uses, usually uses, uh, some kind of generative engine, like a script, where they upload all their different assets and it goes and creates 10,000 or, or however many there are in the collection. And then a person has to go and review them to make sure there are no duplicates and make sure there are no uh, funny looking ones. And then they have to upload all of those assets onto a file hosting uh, system somewhere and then hide them, right? It's good because you always have that pre-reveal image and then you have a reveal party. And when that happens, there's always a chance that the people that are generating it in the first place could leak some of the information because they know which ones are rare. They know which numbers are rare. So I'm not suggesting Moobirds did that. I'm just got, I've just got this here as, a, as an example only because on-chain birds used their CCO assets. Uh, but there are other um, sneaky projects, right? The, the bad ones where you're looking at the pre-reveal activity on OpenSea and there are random pre-reveal NFTs going for much more than the floor price. And then when you look back on it post-reveal, they just, you know, happen to be the best ones in the set, right? So bad actors can uh, leak the, the, the data for the good NFTs and that's just not fair. So the whole point of putting uh, everything on chain is that it becomes provably fair. So anyone that's buying an NFT can be confident as long as the contract is is clean and there's nothing funny going on in, in the back end here. And if there is, by the way, Twitter is so smart that people will be onto it straight away. So I think the fairness in rolling, like if you pay the same money as everyone else, you should have the same fair chance as everyone else to potentially get that rare NFT. And this is one of the best ways to ensure that it's a level playing field. Um, I want to encourage you to come and check out this on-chain birds project. Uh, I think the community is really good and the founders are committed to spreading awareness about the benefits of having an on-chain PFP NFT project. Uh, there are some other ones that have been around for a long time. Uh, on-chain Monkeys is, is a very notable project um, that has a really good community as well. And it's sort of up to us as um, the, the on-chain uh, NFT fans or the believers to try and encourage uh, people that are participating, new people that are coming into that NFT space to take a look at what projects to invest or take part in and whether they're doing things the right way. And I personally honestly believe that the, the on-chain NFT movement is going to gain a lot of momentum because I feel like too many people are getting scammed and people are sort of sick of um, getting rugged, you know, like it's your hard-earned money. Uh, I don't think there should be any excuse for people to be uh, getting ripped off. You know, it's just not cool. And I want the space to thrive and for that to happen, I think we need more transparency. And that's the whole point of blockchain, isn't it? It's, it's, it's supposed to be transparent. You're supposed to be able to look at every single detail um, and, and know that whatever is written in, in the chain is final and it's fair and anyone can uh, scrutinize it, right? I think that's the whole point. So... Come and check uh, this project out on Twitter. It's onchainbirds underscore, or you can also um, look on OpenSea for onchainbirds. Uh, that's it for now. Speak to you next time.